Hello little buns, it is Steph, welcome back to my home. We're gonna talk about something serious today, real quick, because I had an experience recently and I really just wanted to get this out there because it's really important to me. If you guys aren't aware already or if you haven't been watching my videos, I do struggle with an eating disorder. I have been good, as I call it, for, I don't know, six or seven months. It's been a while, I've been doing very, very well. But I had the opportunity recently to speak with somebody that was going through the exact same thing I was going through and I got to see it from a perspective that wasn't mine. I got to see it from my mother's perspective, for example, where she was telling me this is hurting you, this is why this is bad, and I got to see what it was like for somebody to be telling, you know, a, a vulnerable person these things and have them, like, try to shut it down. And it was really interesting. So what I dealt with specifically recently was bulimia in the form of laxative abuse. Bulimia also takes the shape of excessive exercising, right, like purging out every calorie you consume, and it also takes the form of oral purging, right? So there's a few different ways. Also, I, I should let you know, this is going to be maybe sensitive topic, so if this is going to be hard for you to listen to, maybe don't watch this video. This person was also struggling with restricting their food, otherwise known as anorexia, to an extreme amount, right, where them eating with me would be like an ordeal because they were used to just eating maybe an apple slice with some peanut butter once a week, that kind of thing. None of these behaviors, by the way, are healthy. None of them are safe. Do not do these behaviors. If you're watching this, this is not a how-to. It is absolutely not a how-to. I'm telling you, as a person that's on the other end of it, you do not want to do this stuff. It is horrible for you and it is not it is not a weight loss tactic it's a death tactic it's a suicide tactic don't do it anyway my whole thing was I wanted to reduce parts of my body that I couldn't reduce through normal weight loss I thought you know I could reduce the size of my arms for example by having the muscles be eaten by depriving my body of proteins right or any nourishment whatsoever this person thought the same thing with their arms and with their midsection they thought they were too square and the bottom line was that losing weight is not going to change that shape because you can't get small smaller than your bones. You can't get smaller than your structure. If you want to become more voluptuous or more curvy or have that hourglass figure, you want to gain weight, not lose it, especially if you're a, sm a slim or slender person. You can't get more, more curvy by losing more weight, you're just gonna get more square. And that's where this whole thing, this is kind of where I learned to escape this, was like, I looked at what I was doing to myself and I looked at the way I was feeling, which was horrendous, and I looked at the way my body had changed and I had gotten smaller, but not in the way I wanted to. I had just become more square. And I thought that by losing weight, I would become a little bit, you know, more like thin in the middle and out at the hips because my bones would come out. And I was in a place where if my ribs were not showing through here, if my ribs were not showing through here, and if I could not see my hip bones when I laid down, I thought I was not doing a good job. That's where I was as a person like less than a year ago. I'm 30 pounds heavier now, I'm way happier, I'm way healthier, I have way more energy, and I still struggle with some things, but it's not nearly the level of like feeling like a dead person that I was before. I got to hear from this person the exact things that I would say to my mom when she would try to get me to stop doing these behaviors, which was things like, oh, I'll stop when I know, like I'll know where my stop is. And I'd be like, well, when is that? And she's like, I'll know when I'll see it. And what I explained to this person was, "You that will never happen because that never happened for me. I lost 30 pounds doing this shit and it never happened for me. You could see my bones and I still was not at a place where I thought I looked the way I wanted to. And that is exactly, that's the death trap of this, is, is you think you're in control of it, but you're absolutely not. And that is the most important thing I want you to take away from this, is you can think that you have it under control, you can think you know your limit, but you do not know when to stop, and you will not be able to stop. Maybe you will. I mean, I did it without actually getting help beyond a therapist which I was already seeing regularly, so it's possible. And if you cannot afford that kind of help, there's also an app that I really, really, really think is, is a great, great resource for any mental health issue, but especially people with eating disorders, because one of the most important things is to reach out to people who have recovered or are trying to recover and to hear their story and to hear how they understand what this behavior does to their body and how to fix it. So I want to tell you about this app. For everybody, life is stressful to manage. There are stressors, and especially people dealing with mental illness or an eating disorder or a number, transitioning, whatever. You need a support system. Traditional therapy and, you know, counseling and things like that can be very expensive, but it does not have to be expensive to get these support systems in place. Of course, there's always the option of family, friends, and survivors, which is a great, great resource, but I think it's also very imperative, at least in my recovery, to have spoken with that therapist. So the sponsor of this video and also the app I really want to share with you, and this is sincere, this is very much a thing that I think will help you if you're struggling with an eating disorder, 100%, and if you are ready to get help but you can't afford it, this app 
app is fantastic. BetterHelp, it's called BetterHelp, and it's basically this online service that's very affordable and it connects you with a therapist that fits your specific needs and wants and requirements. This is the kind of, of connection that you can have at your fingertips anywhere because it's on your phone. So you can be at the gym, right, and let's say you're an excessive exerciser and you're trying to exercise off all 500 calories you consume that day because you're also restricting your diet and you're sitting there at the gym and you're about to pass out and you're just like, wow, maybe I need help. You can open up BetterHelp and you can talk to somebody that knows how to help you or at least can listen because that really is so important and it's so, so, so helpful and so imperative to recovering from and actually acknowledging that you need to recover from an eating disorder. So you can speak to your therapist or counselor that you've been matched with any time of day via text or video call or phone call, anything that is convenient for you or whatever makes you feel comfortable. And I really love that they also have financial aid for people that qualify for it. But even, you know, the range of prices and things that are available on the app is just fantastic. So if you need help or you need help getting started, I really recommend you check out BetterHelp if you can't afford traditional therapy. Or even if you can, because having it at your fingertips is so powerful is incredible so you can actually find the app in the description box of the video I really encourage you to check it out because it's fantastic anyways the, the person I was speaking with didn't believe therapy would help them and I came from a different perspective because I already had gone through a bunch of therapy for other things that I knew it could help me but this person didn't think it was gonna work for them because they'd been to other counselors and therapists that weren't doing a great job for them and I remember they told me they went to the hospital with somebody they trusted and they said that they asked her they they asked this person a bunch of dumb unhelpful questions like are you not eating or you know are you they asked questions that you can avoid the answer to and it's something that I would have avoided the answer to right if somebody had asked me are you eating enough I would have said yes because in my mind I am eating enough even though I'm not right or the question of are you eating might be right for an anorexic person to see like okay are you restricting your food right but to a bulimic yes you're eating and you're also purging it so it doesn't matter so you can say yes i'm eating and you can look like you need help but they're not going to help you because you're not asking you're not getting asked the right questions it's so frustrating it's so 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 frustrating because there's so little understanding of eating disorders even in medical communities and it's it's just bizarre you know what the bottom line is eating disorders are not about food and sometimes they're not even about weight loss. For me, and also for this individual that I spoke to, it was about control. It was about not feeling in control of anything else in your life. So for me, for example, when I really started bad with this eating disorder, I had just been through a breakup. My living situation had changed, not in a way that I disliked, but it was, you know, I was living with a person now instead of by myself. The YouTube apocalypse was happening. You know, I was maybe getting a little bit stagnated in, in how I was feeling. Like everything was kind of just like blah around me, but I knew I could control the way my body was, was working and handling this food and I did that thinking it was a weight loss thing I was thinking oh I'm gonna get to how I want to look and I'm gonna know when to stop and all this shit but the reason you don't know when to stop is because it's not about weight loss and it's not about food it's about having that thing that you can do and you can control so let me give you an example let's say you are a person who is in high school and you've never had great control over your living situation you've kind of bounced around from house to house because your parent has moved or something like that and you know you're working two jobs and you're in high school and you're doing good in school and you're doing good at your jobs and you have all these things that you need to do and you're being told to do things and all these things and you don't have any control <gasps> and you're also applying for school and it's stressful and you don't know if you're going to get into the school you want or the program you want and you don't know anything and you're so 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 unable to control anything except you know you can go to the gym every day and work off every single calorie you've consumed for five hours and you don't really understand that it's unhealthy because in your mind it's exercise it's good for you even when you're passing out at the gym even when you're fainting you're like I can handle this I know that when I start to feel faint I can eat some food like it's all these behaviors that you justify and you warp into a healthy you try to see it in a way that's good for you and it, it's really it is not good for you and then there's also the question of well why does it matter if I'm hurting myself Myself. And this came up with me too. I was like, well, we're all gonna die one day anyway So why does it matter if I'm hurting myself now if it's the way if it's gonna make me happy? You know if, if being happy is what's most important in life Why is this behavior a problem? And obviously the first response is of course everybody dies But do you want to die 70 years earlier than everybody else because you've been eating terribly or eating in a way that is hurting you Or not eating at all or you know purging out every nutrient that enters your body sure everybody dies But you don't need to die before everybody else you really don't furthermore it's it's not about that's the thing is like when we're in that moment when we are relapsing when we're deep in the eating disorder we really believe that it is what is going to make us happy and it's not 
And it's so, so hard to even explain, let alone see through that when you're in that, that place, right? Because in your head, being skinny, if that is what your eating disorder is about, it, like if that's how you see it, being skinny is gonna make you happy because you're gonna like yourself. You're gonna be able to look right in photos according to what your brain is telling you. And it's so bizarre, it's so bizarre. I used to be like, well, you know, if I'm slim and slender, you know, you'll be able to see my jaw really good and my shoulders, everything will be nice and trim. And I won't feel, I used to have this feeling like I was bigger, like I was outside side of myself, which was dissociating. I was constantly dissociating, which had nothing to do with weight. It was gender dysphoria and it was depressive episodes. It was all these other things, but I could control it by honing in and focusing so much on what I was eating and how to get rid of it. And that really was all I ever thought about. I barely worked. I barely had any fun. Most of what I did all day was eat and take pills. <laughs> and it was fucked up. I don't know. I just, I really want people to be able to see it when they're in it. And it's so hard to do that. It is so hard to do that. So I really encourage you, if you're struggling with something right now, to check out BetterHelp or to get help of any kind, but BetterHelp is accessible and it's there. And I really, really think it's a great service. I don't know. I know this video has been all over the place, but I really just wanted to reflect on that experience I had of meeting somebody that was exactly what I was. And hearing all the words that came out of my mouth from another position was so enlightening and so bizarre. If you guys have any questions about my experience, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to some of you as best I can. It's not usually possible to get back to everybody, but I will do my best. I love you so much. Again, if you're going through anything like this, I know it can be hard to even know you need help or to think that you're in danger. Let me just reiterate something here. Exercising every calorie you consume is an eating disorder because I know there are plenty of girls that don't believe that and men of course plenty of people in general we don't need to gender it there are plenty of people that think that exercising off every calorie you eat of everything is healthy that's not healthy calories are fuel you need fuel food is fuel fill your car with gas and then immediately leak every piece of it out you're not gonna be able to run that car will not move it will break down and it will rust and it will die you are just like that car you cannot put the gas in and then immediately leak it out and think that you're gonna be fine that's not how this works. You need fuel. I love you. Until next time, just remember, oh my gosh, you can do this. I know that sometimes life can feel out of your control and you might do something that's not so good for you to feel in control, but I, you know, it can be hard to acknowledge that you're doing something wrong or doing something to harm yourself. But when you finally are able to, you can get the help you need. And I really hope you get there. I love you so much. Bye.